Everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this short tips uh, video, I will show you how to set uh, in the default starter menu uh, your nodes and save them in uh, some kind of shader library uh, when you create groups. I believe it's uh, a good add to the Shadow Forge series, for example, on CG Cookie as it will allow you just to store all the shader you've made following Ken channel uh, tutorial uh, in your default scene when launching Blender. To do so, it's very simple. I've already made it for me. Uh, I start with a, an, empty, um, an empty document. By default, you should have a camera, a point light and a cube. Uh, I've set my default uh, document totally empty. I have no objects and I'm running cycles. So I will add a cube. You can use the, the cube you already have. And we will add a material uh, that we will call, for example, shadow library or group library. I've already one, but uh, that is called shader library also <laughs> and uh, we will make it fake user and this is important because uh, it tells blender that even if this shader is not used by any object you will keep it uh, in the document because if i remove it get uh, rid of it save my file here for example untitled and reopen it I will just lose this shader all unused data are just removed uh, from blender so let's recreate it shader library give it a fake user and now let's go into the node editor what you can do uh, from here is for example if you have been working on uh, the shader uh, series just append the shader from your saved file i will take another um, example for this re here shader 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 where material it's here once you've load your um, your shader from um, an external source like this just go here to find it i have it here and here i have my uh, group shader i have created for this one which is pretty close to a car paint um, it's a group <coughs> so if i tab here i will see what's in the group and I will show you uh, next how to create those with more simple node tree. And I will just ungroup the, those. Uh, Control C, go into my shader, shader library like this. Get rid of this and this, and that's it. Okay. Now, as it's a group, if I go here. I can see it has been stored into group. And let's say you have created your library, load all of your uh, node group and store them here. You just have to, uh, when you open them, copy and pass them here. So the absorption and this mix value, which will be the next thing we will do. You will just have to do it. As it's a fake user, you can get rid of the cube here to get to your empty file your startup file and then press ctrl u and validate by pressing enter okay so now when i will restart blender we just close it okay and relaunch it if i add an object and give it a shader I will be able to use the group I have stored before. So that's really a good way to save time 
and also to keep some organiz organization into your file because if you do remember I have a, a nice car paint and but I don't remember where is my car file to append the, the node uh, that will be pretty annoying to lost time to waste time searching for it so now I will just make um, this node with you um, this is kind of an answer to a topic to how to know what is the value inputted uh, from a color as you may have noticed in the um, I think the water uh, shader from the shader falls uh, tutorial you can't told us that from Blender 2.7.1 uh, there was um, some kind of changing in the way the color uh, the color value is uh, set in Blender and I will show you the problem is that when you set a color here I have 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 so the average value is 0 0.5 here from this color uh, the value set here is 0 0.7 and that's not good because if you want to set a value the current value that is used is the average value of those and for a 0 0.2 value for example you will have to set it like this which is annoying and you won't have um, the same here so what I have done is really really simple we will use a mix color node and some user advice to use the matte node here but the problem is that we don't have the factor input into the matte node I believe we can input this by creating some node tree but oh, the fact here is that we want to make it as simple as possible so here we'll create a group by pressing ctrl G and here we will replace the color output by a value output because this is what we are looking for so select it here get rid of it add a new output and call this mixed value for example and plug the color here and we will do the same here we will replace the color inputs here by value even if the color output also a value and we can set it by default like this <coughs> sorry that's not really uh, understand understandable okay that's not obvious so let's make it obvious we will got get rid of those we will keep the factor add two other inputs here and call this value 0 1 value 0 2 sorry and we will just plug them here now I get out of this kind of edit mode or group mode by pressing tab I select my new group and we will rename it volume mixer for example give it the name you want and now I have this nice nodes that allow me to mix those value using a factor so if I add an emission shader for example I'll just control shift click with the node wrangler which will add a viewer which is currently an emission shader you can check Susan here control 2 to add uh, two level of subdivision we will add a layer weight to make it controllable and also a color ramp here plug this into the factor and let's put a value here of 0 0.2 and here 0 0.5 for example if you are looking for a first node effect and then you can play with it really simple and for example when you are mixing shaders like a diffuse BSDF with a glossy BSDF you want this um, this Fresnel effect and you do know what are the value of mixing you want 
that's really easier to input them just like this than using colors for example also if you are plugging uh, a texture here to control the roughness of uh, a glossy shader here that's the same okay just put uh, here your image input into the factor and change the values the minimum and the maximum value or whatever those will be driven by these values so the maximum value will be uh, sorry this first value will be driven by the darkest colors while the second value will be driven by the lightest color so if i push this here add a new gradient spot here add this here and another white here the current values output in i get this kind of i will try to make it more obvious yeah the different line i will smooth it that will be better okay and you have here on the edges these different steps we have set here with in the facing uh facing normal here a value of 0 0.2 and i guess on the uh, the parallel the, the more tangent uh, area a value of 0 0.5 you can put it to one and here to zero and i have pure black here and pure white so the only way i know to source the value here just to check is to add uh, uh, whatever um, whatever input that has a color rgb color and use the picker here and here we can see that our rgb value is purely zero sorry here and here also and if we pick up the farthest point here we might be very close to one yep we are i will try two i don't even know if it works no it doesn't you can see if you have um with this method and i don't know if someone has uh, created a script or something to to read the values but you will only see the values from zero to one this is not really accurate currently the the better way is to check what you have plugged and try to guess what are the value had put in in your scene so once you've done this you can uh, get rid of everything assuming you are still on your base uh, base scene go into your uh, shader library add it get back to your default viewport get rid of everything control u save and that's it Next time you will launch Blender, you will have those node groups stored into Blender as default. So I hope you've enjoyed those short tips and see you next time.